This is my desktop PC. I use it mainly for video editing and gaming. And this is my laptop, a ThinkPad Z13 Gen 2. And here's another laptop, a 2012 MacBook Air. And they all have one thing in common, the Linux distro they're running. It can often feel overwhelming trying to pick the best distro for you. Each has benefits and drawbacks. But why have I gravitated to this one distro? And is it the best one for you? Join me in this video to find out. It sounds superficial, but something that's really important to me when choosing a Linux distro is the desktop environment. I want my computer's desktop to feel modern, refined, and just look nice. And my chosen distro nails it, in my opinion, with GNOME. I usually make a few tweaks using GNOME extensions, namely dash to dock, blur my shell, and desktop icons. And when it all comes together, you're presented with a modern feeling desktop with a refined file manager, a consistent UI across system and many third party apps, and an overarching design that just looks great. It also has some great multitasking features which feel very Mac OS when you're on a laptop. GNOME definitely won't be everyone's favourite desktop environment, but for me, with those added tweaks, it's perfect. I find it really important to actually like what I see on my computer screen, so I really do start here when choosing a distro. Okay, pretty visuals out of the way. Another important thing for me is compatibility. Linux has a bit of a track record for being difficult with modern hardware, and it's one of the reasons I tend to never buy super new components. Okay, that and the price. But I recently upgraded from an RTX 3070 to a 4070 Super, and Linux Mint, which I'd been happily using for a year, was so painful. No matter what I did, I couldn't get the new card to play nicely. No amount of driver reinstallation and package updates did the trick. I even tried to install newer kernels. It was just dependency and package hell. And unless I wanted to spend my time manually maintaining individual core system packages, Mint was out of the question. And after all this, I remembered I'd had this exact experience while trying to use Mint on the Z13 ThinkPad, and that switching to Fedora solved my GPU driver woes. So I switched over on my desktop too, and my experience forms the basis of this whole video. We're going to be talking about Fedora. I won't pretend to understand the inner workings of Fedora and how the packages, GPU drivers and kernel all work together, but it just worked. And I find that more often than not, Fedora is a great choice for a modern system for this reason. And instead of using Mint, which opts for long-term support for stability, Fedora always just seems to have a recent kernel and up-to-date versions of system packages. Things just seem to work, especially on common hardware. The next thing we'll talk about is package management, but first let's check out this video's sponsor, Justway. If you've got a project that needs something bespoke, like 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal, injection moulding, and urethane casting, Justway have you covered. You can design your own parts and components, or use somebody else's. Justway is great because once you've uploaded your file, you'll get an instant quote. That way you'll know where you stand for your project, and it's pretty affordable. Thanks to Justway for sponsoring this video. Check them out for your next project in the description below. So, package management. Fedora uses the DNF package manager, and I absolutely love it. It seems slightly slower than APT, which Linux Mint uses. But what it lacks in speed, it makes up for in how well it handles itself. DNF uses libsolv for dependency resolution, which is arguably more sophisticated than APT's older mechanisms, and it's one of those things I can't quite quantify, but it just feels more robust, as if more complex problems are being solved under the hood without me having to intervene. So dependencies, device drivers, and kernel updates are beautifully managed, and configurations feel really clean. I'm still early in my Linux journey myself, having only been down the rabbit hole for a couple of years now but I still much prefer DNF over APT. It just feels super robust. One thing that people don't often cover is who's behind their chosen Linux distro. And in the case of Fedora, it's driven by the community Fedora project, but it's backed by Red Hat. Red Hat is one of the largest Linux focused companies in the world, and they've been around for decades. Even though they were acquired by IBM in 2019, they're still mostly independent and fund lots of open source development. This includes projects like GNOME, Systemd, Pipewire, and Fedora itself. But what all this means is that you're getting a stable operating system with some solid weight behind it, and it makes it more likely that it's here to stay. Some people don't like this, and prefer fully community-developed and led distros without any corporate involvement. 
but I like the reassurance that Fedora has some weight behind it. It might sound boring, but it's part of what makes a distro mature and polished. There are people working on parts of Fedora full time. So, is Fedora the best distro in 2025? Well, that's hard to say. It depends on what hardware you want to install it on. I've genuinely found that it works on pretty much whatever I try it on, with the exception of my partner's gaming laptop with a dual GPU setup, a common pain point on Linux anyway. But your experience might be different. In any case, you should definitely consider it. Make sure you do some research, but sometimes the best choice is one of the simplest and most common. But I want to know what you think. Have you used Fedora? What's important to you in a Linux distro? Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.